So Robert Francis will be announcing his review into whistleblowing on Wednesday. Um, that document will be read very carefully by myself and I will be doing a full written response to that. Um, meanwhile, we have some uh, hints about what may be in it. Sunday Times yesterday um, had two stories on one page. One about Sir Robert Francis and one about Somerset Council who've actually paid a legal firm to find out the identity of a whistleblower who'd actually raised genuine concerns. Um, a beggar's belief that, you know, when a whistleblower goes to a journalist that their identity could be at risk and that a legal firm could be carrying out such an illegal activity, not to mention an immoral activity. Um, on the same page was um, a piece about the upcoming review by Sir Robert Francis um, and it mentions that you know one of the things he may come out with is to train potential whistleblowers. What is he going to train them in? Bearing in mind that he's been you know made aware of all our evidence, breaking the silence, one, two and three, and beyond the facade, um, I'd like to ask if that's the case, what is he thinking of training them in? Um, could it be how to get a job and not tell anyone you're a whistleblower? Um, how to sell your belongings at a boot sale and get a good price? How to learn to live on less calories than those on a diet because you're not going to have any money to buy food? This is the reality for a whistleblower. This is what's happening to people every day and this is the evidence that's in this document. It's not the whistleblowers that need training. Sir Robert Francis, it is the employers. Not only do they need training, but they need to be held to account. Held to account in a court of law. Edna's law is the only law that will do that. In the last few years, we've had untold um, promises um, about PEDA and about protection of whistleblowers and that we will be looking at this in more detail, etc. 15 years PEDA has been in force and 15 years PEDA has been proven to be a total and complete failure. It is a slap in the face for whistleblowers and employers know that PEDA is a joke and therefore there's no deterrent there at all to stop them doing what they do to whistleblowers. Their lives have been made a misery and yet we're talking about training whistleblowers. Um, it seems to me that on this one point alone, um, you've lost the plot if you think you can train whistleblowers. We should not be putting the onus on the whistleblowers. There are good people with integrity and courage that I speak to every day, hundreds of people um, that stand up and say that something's wrong. It's not them that need the training. It's not them that is the problem. The problem is what happens when somebody raises a concern? As soon as they speak out, they are the problem and their lives are being made a misery and this has to stop and it's the only way that culture will change. You cannot change culture by just saying, don't be naughty to whistleblowers, we have guidance on this, we have um, saying, oh, there's no such thing as a gagging clause. Well, actually, PEDA itself is a gagging clause. Most whistleblowers never make it into court. They're impeded into getting justice by PEDA. PEDA is the biggest gagging clause of all, all because it makes it impossible for the public to ever find out anything about the wrongdoing. The actual wrongdoing itself is covered up and PEDA is implicated in doing that. It actually stops people from speaking out. It stops people from getting to call. It stops whistleblowers from coming forward because they know of someone else who's, who's gone through hell because they try to raise the alarm. Every day I also speak to the families of people who have lost people because nobody spoke out or someone did speak out and they were ignored. Let's not forget, for example, the old deanery where 11 staff lost their jobs. They reported everything to the CQC, to safeguarding. They gave detailed statements and yet the abuse of the people in that care home continued. 
and it was only Panorama that stopped the abuse. Should we as a country be reliant on Panorama to stop abuse? We should be we should be protecting whistleblowers. If we protect the protectors, we can stop all abuse. You have to protect whistleblowers by law and you have to protect all whistleblowers. From the girl working in the off licence who sees theft to the road sweeper to the guy who's driving a bus, everyone needs to be protected by law equally. The message then is sent out that whistleblowers are protected and wrongdoing those who allow it will be held to account. Uh, currently, we have situations where people who've covered up abuse of vulnerable people like Edna go on to thrive and are given honours by the system. CBEs, OBEs, you find that the people who've, who've caused the most harm to, the, to vulnerable people are the people with the highest honours. What does that say about us as a country when people have a sir or a dame, you know, before their names? Dame Cynthia Bower, Dame Jo Williams. You know, it seems to me that, you know, C OBE, CBEs are given to those that stand by and do nothing, whilst the whistleblower is the person that's left selling their belongings in a boot sale. If you... Um, are a lawyer, Sir Robert Francis, then surely you have a duty of care to, to provide justice. And justice is what whistleblowers want, justice and the truth. There needs to be a full public inquiry into all those cases that have been highlighted to the government. There needs to be a full public inquiry and there needs to be a jury because that is the safest way for justice to prevail and you cannot keep ignoring this wrongdoing, you cannot keep sticking plasters on something that is oozing rot. You know, vulnerable children, you know, abused on the scale that they were at Rotherham, have you, have you learned nothing? Whistleblowing extends to all areas, all sectors, and we need to make sure that people can speak out. I'm doing this every day because I have the motivation to fight for the people that I speak to because I see the price of what happens when people don't act on the abuse, the price to families. I also see the price paid by whistleblowers where somebody has to go to a local hotel to get toilet paper who's got, who have two tins of soup in their cupboard and they have nothing to eat and they're starving and not because they fell on hard times but because they spoke up for vulnerable people. If you cannot see that these people deserve justice, then you have no place in, in, in the justice system or in any kind of recommendations. We need Edna's law. There is no compromise. Edna's law will protect the, you know, the protectors and vulnerable people. So please do the right thing. Do what a whistleblower would do.